Very good morning to one and all present here. I am delighted to welcome you to the portal of VHN Sindhi Kumara Nada College, an institution of higher education, which was established in the year 1947. The main objective of this institution is to make education easily accessible to the people of Vidhanagar and surrounding villages. The college has been continuously working upon the course contents, pedagogy, and working systems, ensuring that the students get the best learning and excel in the global arena. Their philosophy is to ignite the young minds and transit them from knowledge consumers to knowledge producers and make them innovative thinkers and problem solvers and prepare them to survive in the 21st century. Yet, even after developing our students to their full credentials, students are lagging behind in their communication and soft skills. Still, they have fear in facing people, especially after a high qualification, they fail in their interview. At this juncture, we wholeheartedly thank our principal, Dr. P. Sundara Pandian, mm -hmm. our Dean Student Service, Dr. P. Stami, Associate Professor, Department of Chemistry, and Additional Dean Student Service, Dr. N. Alagumani Kumaran, Assistant Professor, <coughs> Department of Geology, for organizing this webinar to equip our children to face the real world. Let us start this wonderful session with Tamil Thai Valsu. Thank you. First impression matters. Today we are organizing webinar on the first impression matters. Employees, employees hire people, not <coughs> papers. This is exclusive for a college to outgoing students. Dear students, you can share your chat in the chat box after the session is over before 10 or 15 minutes and put your questions in the chat box informatively. By the end of the session, a feedback form will be given to you. You should fill it immediately and start it. Don't delay. Your certificate will be issued only after filling your feedback form in the appropriate time. Now, I would like to welcome Dr. P. Sami, Dean Student Service and Associate Professor of Chemistry, the convener of this program, Sir's alumni, and to his credentials, he has completed two major research projects, guided PhD scholars to a tune of two, won the Best Teacher Award in 2017-2018, from Reddington Corporate Social Responsibility Trust, Chennai. He has also published many research papers in journals of high reputation. Adi has served as staff in staff in charge of differently able students. He has done a selfless service of a college student and being serving as a dean service in a college since 2012. At the outset, I request Dr. P. Sami, Dean Student Service, to deliver the welcome note. Welcome yourself. Thank you, ma'am. Respected and beloved principal of our college, Captain Dr. P. Sundra Pandian, resourceful and charming resource person, Mrs. Bindu, dear colleagues, and my dear student friends. Good morning to you all. Today is an awesome day. Yeah, we are all gathered through online mode for the conduct of this webinar on interview skills. First of all, I'm highly thankful to the Managing Board Office Paris of VHN Sandeep Marnada College and our dynamic principal for having given my office the opportunity of conducting this great program. Why I am saying this as a great program is that even this global pandemic cannot lock down the learning cost of VHNSN College students and this fact is 
proved by your overwhelming response. My duty at this moment is to welcome the gathering. First, I welcome our principal, Dr. P. Sundara Pandian, on behalf of the organizing committee and students. He is the backbone of this program. He is a personality, he is a personality who infuses confidence among staff and students of our college by his dynamic actions. Now, he adorns this program by his gracious presence and going to inaugurate the webinar. Once again, on behalf of the organizing committee, on behalf of the students, I welcome you, sir. When I approached our principal for the conduct of this program, he gave me the details of the resource person, Mrs. Bindu. He asked me to talk to ma'am regarding the arrangements and conduct of the program. I talked to her during the first conversation itself. She impressed me and inspired me. And that brings us the title of today's talk, that is Interview First Impression Matters. It is the need of the hour for outgoing students. Thank you, Mrs. Bindu, for having accepted our invitation. And on behalf of the organizing committee, and on behalf of our student participants, I welcome you to this webinar. Next, I welcome Dr. S. Muthalashmi, ma'am, Assistant Professor of Commerce. She is always a helpful and reliable source in contacting several student-centered programs in our college. Thank you, Dr. SML, for your support and welcome you to the webinar. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Now, Thank you. it's an era of change. We are running behind the online technology for learning. At this juncture, I appreciate two great young and dynamic personalities of our college, and that is none other than Mr. Brahim Sangar, Professor of Computer Application, and Mr. Ramra, Professor of Commerce Computer Application, for their technical assistance for the execution of this program. I welcome you, Mr. Brahim and Mr. Ramraj, to this program. Next, I welcome Lieutenant. Children, me, he is supporting me in all my activities. Welcome, Dr. Alagmanik Maran, for your, and I am highly thankful to you for your great support in each and every activities. I welcome Mr. Prabhu and K7 for the program, who helped us a lot to catch and reach you during this lockdown situation. Welcome, sir. Finally, I welcome the real beneficiaries of this program, my dear student Kannas. Welcome you all. Please be attend attentive in this program. This will be highly helpful to you to face your future with full of hope. Future with full of hope. This session of Mrs. Bindu will shape you all. This session of Mrs. Bindu will shape you all. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to deliver the welcome address in this webinar. Once again, I welcome one and all linked together through Google Meet and Vega Chenna Sensi YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for giving a wonderful welcome address. To bring a note of our principal, Dr. P. Sudra Pandian, he is a writer and thinker on commerce and management subjects for more than a quarter of a century. He is a good blend of techno-commerce academic background. He is a recognized supervisor for PhD scholars at MK University, Madurai Kamaraj University, Bharatiya University, and Manomaniam Sundarnar University. He has produced 45, 41 MPhil and 10 PhD scholars. He has credit to an authoring 33 books and published 180 research articles in national, international journals and in edited books. He was the recipient of the Best Teacher Award by Tamil Nadu Council for Higher Education in the year 2007-2008. And also, he has won the Best NSS Program Officer Award by Government of Tamil Nadu in the year 2004-2005. He is the recipient of Nehru Lifetime Achievement Award in 2017 from Nehru Group of Institutions. He is also an excellent, uh, excellent administrator. He is of the program for the benefit of our faculty members and the students. The backbone of all the successful webinar in our college are mentor, motivator, who discharges his duties enthusiastically and courageously. 
our principal keeps thinking of the welfare of our students always even in this pandemic situation to keep our students engaged such webinar are organized to make them move from the successful future privilege in welcoming you sir to inaugurate the webinar on interview first impression matters employers hire people not papers welcome you dear sir very good morning to all of you respected today's chief guest mrs bindu dr c swami dean student services president dr alan Another college autonomous with the nagar. I extend a warm welcome to my dear students and our resource person, Mrs. K. Bindu, MBA, image consultant and soft skills trainer, certified mindfulness coach, Bangalore. Hope all the students are safe and healthy. At the outset, I feel immensely happy to conduct the webinar on interview. First impression matters. Employers hire people, not papers, especially for our college outgoing students. This concern topic is taken particularly for our outgoing students, as it is crucial for them to face many interviews. Job interviews are considered as an important part of the selection and hiring process. The suitability of the applicant can be clearly assessed through this process. Students should know that employees are assessed through the process of interview and that assessment is considered as one of the best ways to know one's potential. <coughs> it is conducted to evaluate the manner one communicates. We also know interview forms a basis to check the confidence level of the candidate. When a person speaks, his body language, the words he or she make use are assessed under the basic etiquette or counter. To examine the quality of answers delivered by the person, the process of interview is essential. Outward appearance are also counts in an interview. Dressing in the right attire for an interview shows that you are serious about the job, respectful of the interview's time and are genuinely interested in the position. It also demonstrates an understanding of the corporate culture and showcases you as someone who would fit easily into the workplace dynamic. Some of the traits that an interview would like to see in you are communication skills, presentation skills, analytical skills, behavioral, proper body language, professionalism, attitude. Not all companies adhere to the personal interviews. Rather, some also reach out in the Skype interviews, group interview, etc. Whatever is the type, the purpose remains the same for all the types. Let us hear more from our resource person, Mr. A. Pindu, MBA, image consultant, and a soft skill trainer, certified mindfulness coach in Bangalore. Thank you, madam, for Thank accepting you. our invitation to interact with our college students and for more in insightfulness on the tactics of facing an interview. My wholehearted wishes to the convener, Dr. P. Swami, Dean, Student Services, additional Dean, Student Services, and uh, co-convener of the program, Lieutenant Dr. Alamuni Kumaran, <coughs> committee members, have the effort to import the traits of an interview to our college students. I feel happy to inaugurate the webinar on interview, first impression matters, employers, hire people, and not paper. For, I thank once again uh, uh, Mrs. K. Bindu for uh, giving us a wonderful topic and really an interesting one too so we too not hiring the paper we only have the paper. okay thank you for the uh, effective uh, interesting topic once again i welcome our students and request them to take
the inputs of this webinar and please ask question in the chat box so that uh, at the end dr s mutlajimi will put the questions to the today's our uh, charming resource person and uh, i am very happy to inaugurate the uh, webinar thank you and best wishes thank you very much thank you sir thank you so much we thank our beloved principal for inaugurating the webinar a resource person mrs k bindu is currently a trainee image consultant and soft skill trainer bangalore she secured her bachelor of business management from university of mysore 2011 Masters in Business Administration from SJCE College, Mysore, in the year 2013. She has completed UGC Net in Management in December 2019. A resource person worked at MES College of Arts, Science, Arts and Science and Commerce, Bangalore, from July 2016 to March 2017. Worked in Ramya Institute of Business Studies, Bangalore, June 2015 to July 2016. She has also worked at RV Institute of Management, Bangalore. from february 2015 to may 2015 and have also worked as assistant professor in rajiv institute of technology hazard october 2013 to october 2014 very proficient in many subjects she has taught managerial organization organizational behavior business government and society personal growth and inter interpersonal effectiveness strategic talent management recruitment and selection compensation and benefits integrated marketing communication consumer behavior managerial communication marketing management and retail management a resource person has won the best paper award at ira jaipur 2017 for the paper titled emotional intelligence a tool for effective workplace certified as kaivalaya in workshop conducted by leaders academy for personal success in 2012 a resource person has been the team manager of the management fest at alwas mudbidri in february 2009 a delighted resource person has enormous competency skills also she is energetic and possesses presentable personality very good at communication and interpersonal skills always have a mindset to open to learn new things blessed with wonderful presentation skills high degree of written and verbal skills superficial women at prioritizing multitasking and time management a talented public speaker and enthusiastic in learning foreign languages moreover she has good listening skills and excellent in coaching and mentoring i esteem resource persons area of interest is image management soft skills training human resource management organizational behavior madam we are extremely happy to have you as a resource person for a for a treasured students Ma'am, now it is your turn to make up a students with you. Welcome you, ma'am, to open the minds of a budding students and fill it with tactics to be followed while facing an interview. Thank you, madam, for giving us our students more wonderful tips. We are really delighted to have you here for us for outgoing students. Welcome you, ma'am, to pour more information on tactics of interview. Welcome. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, principal sir. Thank you, dean sir, Muthalakshmi ma'am, and all the people who are present, including students. I welcome you all to my session. This is a wonderful morning, and I wish we'll share some learning exchange. And principal sir rightly said the crux of my presentation today. Thank you, principal sir. So, can I start now? Yeah, sure, ma'am. You can start. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Before I start my session, I would like to welcome all of you to this wonderful morning. But one thing said at the front, I always believe in internalizing this quote: "Don't waste your time chasing butterflies. Mend your garden, and the butterflies will come." You know why I say this? Most of us have. I'm talking from the students' perspective that okay, I have been. You know, college is not providing us campus selection. People don't recruit freshers. This is a common mindset that all of the students have. Heard. But trust me, the truth is that you have to mend. You have to shape your garden. That means to say, you have to upskill yourself, and then opportunities will come to you. And when the opportunities come, you should be open for it. okay having said this i believe that in order to grow and succeed 
for any person in any aspect of life it can be personal it can be professional it can be social one has to be extremely committed should have discipline and have this continuous urge to learn try and experiment new things isn't it anywhere it be it in our workplace or be it at home or be it in any job that you do monotonous will ultimately lead you to boredom so when you learn and experiment new things when you upskill yourself each and every day and one small thing a day will definitely lead you to become a big personality so why i'm telling this is because students remember that you are your own brand your college your society will not be your brand when you go and sit in the interview okay you might be studying from the one of the famous college or you might you can have one of the good certification but what matters in interview is on that day on that hour how you are presenting yourself okay it can be for any person you might be a student you might be a professional or even if i'm talking in terms of homemakers okay it becomes very crucial for all of us to stay authentic to stay positive and to refine your image in order to build an impactful impression what do i mean by this let us go in detail so all of us are getting graduated all of us finish our post graduation so ultimately what is the purpose we all need to get that dream job isn't it everyone studies gets certified gets your graduation in order to get your dream job right so everyone wants to win in the race but tell me how many of you are prepared four years your study four years you get your certifications you master your subjects but to interview keeping interview in your mind how many of you are getting prepared right okay today the agenda i'll i'll help you out how to you know make this wonderful impression and help i'll help you to create a wonderful personality and impactful impression in front of the interviewers and to you as a person the agenda we study today is to understand the importance of first impression to understand the importance of non verbal communication to learn the concept of impression management and the role of positive self image before i start my session i want you all to see this experiment i would demonstrate a very small experiment with which i'm going to start the session it's a lesson that we are going to learn from an empty cup okay i have three glasses with me here can you all see this glass this is a glass filled with water okay here the glass symbolizes our mind and the water inside it symbolizes all your inner thoughts your fears your inhibitions and your past learnings at the whole set if i have to say this is yourself why i'm telling this because there are different kinds of learners what happens is each person when he has to learn he picks up a different glass here and the glass here is mind as i said what happens if i try to pour any amount of new water inside this glass how much water can it really contain since the glass is already full whatever water i am pouring it is going to go out can you all listen to me am i audible yeah ma'am okay so what happens is that the water inside the glass is already full any amount of fresh water that i'm trying to put in it goes out and it becomes waste okay so if i take another glass i have my second glass here which is half filled with water and i have added a little tint of a color and here the colored water also symbolizes the same thing that is your fears your emotions your inhibitions what happens if i try to pour fresh water inside this glass definitely there is little amount of space for it, for it to contain but did you see the color of the water did you observe the impurities inside this wa water is getting mixed one second ha huh? request the technical team to show your video okay uh, uh prem sir are you online prem sir ma'am any problem yes sir yeah, sure, ma'am can i request yes ma'am you can be able to see we are able to see ma'am your voice is audible no problem you can continue ma'am but yes. i think uh, i think your video won't be shown only powerpoint will be shown to the students i think so
filled with mixed colored water it is meaning to say that i am adding pure water but it is getting mixed with the impurities so what happens here is that there is no clarity this is what i meant to say when there is no clarity the learning is not complete am i right so what happens here if a person see now i have an empty glass with me what happens with this empty glass if i pour any amount of fresh water inside the empty glass the water can be contained isn't it that means to say as learners when we all learn something we need to sit with our minds empty or our glasses empty in order to contain the new knowledge this is meaning to say because i have seen people 90% of the people who think that they have to uh, upgrade themselves they have to develop themselves will attend lot of personal development classes or read so many books or still follow people on the social platforms in order to develop themselves but what what happens is that the result is not 100% whatever change that happens in you know a 30 40% of change that happens will not be staying for the long time with them just because that their glasses are not empty they would either learn with a glass completely filled or with a glass that is half filled that means to say they already have their prejudiced thinking so next time students whenever you appear to learn something please learn with your minds empty contain all the amount of knowledge that is available to you having said this moving to the topic now first impression when does it actually start why i am asking you this question is that way back in 2013 when i attended my first interview when i finished my mba there was this company finance company which came to the campus for selecting the candidates and i was a hr student what happened is i decided to attend the interview and i had lot of fear in me just like how you all have right now i was so scared of attending the interview because first thing is it is a finance company and i am a hr student numbers was never my strength so what i thought is i had lot of confusions in my mind okay they are going to ask me something about balance sheet they going to me they are going to ask me something about the budget economy so many things in my mind and i attended the personal round when i attended the interviewer took 15 minutes of time he spoke to me and he said okay we will get back to you so i was so worried thinking that does this person really want to hire me or he just thought i am not fit for the work why i felt this because they never asked me any questions related to the subjects that i had studied that is why i have written here that good marks is not equal to good performance in interview or promotions or only good marks is never this i got selected to the second round and the second round was group discussion i was basically surprised and hello ma'am madam bindu ma'am madam your voice madam. is breaking i think your network is not in the flow madam bindu ma'am bindu ma'am please check your bandwidth madam next ten years, how do you handle stress and how do you deal with conflict why i am introducing you to these kind of questions is because so it is very easy for you all to attend interview and clear this technical and operational rounds but what happens is the hr element of the interview is what i am training you about what happens here is when you attend an hr element the person is not trying to gauge you on your certificates he is definitely not trying to gauge you on the marks you have scored what he is trying to do is he is trying to gauge you on the aspects that whether you you will be the right fit to the organization whether you will adapt to the culture whether you will 
work well with the team these are the different kinds of parameters what an hr sees in you so what matters in most in interview is that your attitudes your manners and personality why i am calling it attitude there are different kinds of attitude it can be positive attitude negative attitude aggressive attitude when you are talking to a person for about 30 40 minutes normally the interview ends in 20 40 minutes okay if the person is interested the interviewer interview may get elongated but he tries to talk to you he he talks to you about various aspects ju- just to judge your attitude what kind of person you are whether a challenge approaches and how do you take it do you blame the situation or you take that responsibility to handle the situation these are the kind of things that an hr is trying to gauge you and when i'm talking about manners keep it in mind that if you are not scoring 100 on 100 in many of the subjects or in the subject that is required to the job it is still okay for the interviews okay but the interviewers will not bear it when you are not scoring 100 on 100 in mannerisms do you understand why i am telling this is because see you have to attend an interview it is a very common sense that you knock the door you ask them whether you can get inside and when you go to the interview place you actually stand you don't take pull out the chair and sit if you do that the person who is sitting opposite to you will think that you are lacking some mannerisms right or say suppose you finished the interview and you want to get out of the interview hall how do you come out you have to smile and you have to thank them for the opportunity that is provided to you and you have to thank for them investing their time in you these are all those things that will score you high on your manners okay and talking about personality what is it about personality when a person is talking to you for 20 30 minutes in that interview he will try and understand whether you are an enthusiastic person about the job are you a person who is taking this job very seriously are you open for new learning and are you adaptable all these things can be understood by seeing your personality your body language your communication and your thoughts when you express it all right so all these things becomes very important when i'm talking about interview i'll make it very simple to you interview is not some rocket science okay don't get don't ever get scared of interviews because if you break the interview it is inter break and then view what does it mean inter is between people view is seeing that means to say interview is all about finding a right match okay to the organization and the person who wants to go to the organization there has to be a right match it is as simple as that so what happens in interview i want you to understand two things about interview one is why do they want to see you in person second is why do you go prepared for interviews okay because you know you are going to be judged and absolutely you have to go there and give them the right impression about you you might be very confident inside you about the work that you are going to do but when you go and attend the interview if your appearance is not proper or if your body language is not proper the person might think that you are under confident and you will definitely not have the edge over other candidates so the truth of this interview is that people hire you for hard skills and fire you for soft skills it is happening everywhere any time any industry any sector why i'm telling this is because you need to understand what are these hard skills when you get a job ad you can see something called job specifications that means the qualifications that is required in order to be eligible to apply for that job that becomes your hard skills and most of you all would have gathered all those things in that 3 4 5 years of your education that is undergraduation or post graduation but what is this soft skills Harvard University says that soft skills here after is no more soft skills it is an essential skills okay see when i'm talking about soft skills it can be your team spirit self confidence communication empathy assertiveness and personality why all these become soft skills and now you should be understanding what is that hr element of the interview 
and that person is actually sitting there to see whether the candidate is having all these different soft skills okay so when i'm talking about interview i want to take you through the larger perspective of interview interview is not only for your jobs right interview can be your business meeting interview can be a marriage proposal it can be your first date offers or new neighbors meeting them and it can even happen in shoppings what are you giving them as your first impression is nothing but your interview a person when you talk to them when you see them the way you greet them the mannerisms that you exhibit will make you or the or is it's going to break your impression okay so i'll take you through a small example day in day out how do we face this interviews okay see all of you might have used elevators right be it in your apartments in the workplace or when you go to shopping malls we all travel in lifts and for most of the people traveling in lift can be such a mundane process from floor to floor day in day out isn't it see observe all the people in the lift here somebody is looking at the door somebody is staring shoes one person is looking at his watch constantly someone is trying to surf his mobile as if it is very important at that particular time to read something isn't it why do people behave so indifferently inside a small tiny space can you next time when you go please kind observe the kind of indifferent behaviors each person is going to show there why this happens is none of them are communicating with each other the lady is not talking to the man next to her nobody is smiling nobody is having eye contact they are trying to communicate the same thing that means to say that they are not interested to have a conversation somebody doesn't want to have an eye call eye contact somebody doesn't want to smile all these things are communicated even without a word coming out of their mouth isn't it so what i mean to say is that you cannot not communicate the only way to not communicate is to not exist but do we have that second option certainly no right so look at the picture here what everybody is trying to say all the people here are dressed well they have groomed themselves well but are they giving out the same message a lady is getting bored another lady is thinking something a man is worried about something another man is trying to remember something see how this non verbal you know communication is communicating to the person who is who are just looking at that isn't it so what is this first impression so you got to know that first impression is what message you tend to give out when you appear in front of another person now you need to know something important that how much time you have got to make this first impressions do you know that in first 4 to 7 seconds of meeting a person a judgment is made and in next 30 seconds the judgment is going to be finalized this is so amazing right see in order to move people into action you have to impress and influence them and to do that you need to be bravely authentic of who you are without hurting your ability to succeed when you copy somebody's style or when you copy copy somebody else you can't be authentic of yourself and the time you have got to make all these things is that 3 to 4 seconds okay so i will take you through the story we all who is the co-founder of infosys foundation we all know that she writes lot of books she does lot of philanthropical works and in one of the books she has narrated a story about her philanthropical works to a tribal community there was this tribal community where she wanted to go and help them create some kind of awareness regarding education health society hygiene and all those things how many ever times sudha murthy went with her team to approach them the tribal people were not at all agreeing to talk to her there came a point where the tribal community people got their weapons and stones to throw on her just to send her away this
I tried to tell this to uh, people, and she spoke this to her mother. And mother said, "Sudha, look at you and the people whom you are trying. You are trying to connect with the tribal community, and you don't look and feel you are a person among them. In order to connect with people." Bindu ma'am, hello ma'am. Hello ma'am, the voice is not audible ma'am. Bindu ma'am, are you on the line ma'am? Madam, for some, your voice is not audible ma'am. Now is it audible ma'am? Ah uh, yeah yeah. Can you hear me? Hello. 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 Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Ma'am, actually, your voice as well as your bandwidth is, I think, some problem issues, ma'am. Can you check your bandwidth? Okay, yes, just just a second. Just a second, sir. Can you see my PPT? Yeah, yes, now we can. Now we can see your PPT. I'll just change to the internet. One second. Give me a moment. Okay, ma'am. Okay, can I continue, ma'am? Is it audible ah, now? Can, yes, it is audible, ma'am. Yeah. You can continue. Your PPT presentation yeah. is also visible. Okay, okay ma'am. So, sorry for the technical glitches. Yeah, <laughs> no problem. So, what happened next is Sudha Murthy took a little time, and then. She madam i think your voice is breaking again ma'am ma'am is it audible ah uh, no uh, it's a, there is a break in it so please check it over ma'am yeah i am i yeah yeah okay ma'am thank you i'm going to change the internet ah uh, yeah sure okay uh I hope no trouble will come again, ma'am. I have shifted it to the uh, mobile internet. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. So what? Yeah. What happened there is it was easy to understand that Sudha Murthy's appearance made huge change to the tribal people because she had not communicated anything yet to the tribal community. All that she did was she changed the way she went and approached them next time. This time, the tribal community. didn't assume her to be any threat right so why i'm telling this is because everything counts involves your image and appearance and when i'm talking about first impression there are four elements which you have to uh, concentrate about one is clothing grooming body language and vocal communication if you see all these elements here 80% of the message that you're going to convey is visual in nature why is it visual in nature is that your clothing grooming and body language comes much before what you are actually going to communicate with people so here visual cues speak louder and faster than words i'll take a small example as we all know that a picture is worth a thousand words when a, when there is a small child you show him two toys the child's attention is grabbed by that toy which is more bright and shiny which is more colorful it is same in case of adults as they grow up they give lot of important to the visual cues in order to judge a person but colors may grow less bright or shiny but still the impression that it is given matters a lot i can take and take you through an example of this beverage company which is tropicana we all know it is one of the famous company in 2009 they thought of bringing in some kind of refreshment in their packaging so what they did is before and after pic if you are able to see tropicana is big large and bold in case of first picture after the refreshment in packaging what they did is 
they try to put the brand name very small vertical in a lesser font size and try to emphasize that 100% orange okay but trust me people in the supermarkets who were buying this tropicana beverage like before did not buy the sales within one month dropped by 20% and people were and company were thinking why this has happened because there was no change in the taste no change in the ingredients or anything it was just packaging that they tried to rework upon so what happened after several surveys conducted they came to an understanding that the second picture people assumed it to be a generic product you know why that happened remember our first slide it takes only 3 to 4 seconds for any person to make a first impression when you see tropicana people relate quality with brand that is a normal consumer psychology right so next in the package change of packaging they didn't see tropicana evidently so they assumed it to be generic product so it is very less population who takes the product reads what is there and what changes happened what is what was before and what is after it is a very less population but normally people tend to you know judge or justify a product based upon its look even in our case it is the same thing when you go to a supermarket what goes inside your basket should be neatly packaged if the packaging is not good you will obviously not pick it up and you will leave it in the shelf look at the second picture here a well presented food can stimulate hunger we see so many ads of you know food or you see many ads of this beverages they try to create that stimulate that feelings inside you through wonderful pictures all these are related to the same thing that a picture is worth a thousand words it is the same case even for a candidate who is appearing for the interview you need to appear well you need to groom yourself well your body language has to be up to the mark in order to get an edge over other candidates okay when i'm talking about visual impression in interview perspective look at the two pictures what i've put here in the second picture interviewers are sitting straight with a right body language but look at the person candidate interviewee who is sitting there who is slouched to the people who are seeing him it gives an impression that he is least interested he is depressed or he is not enthusiastic about the job or role that he is going to apply for isn't it and look at the first picture here there are two ladies with two different attires a person in the second picture i mean second uh, lady is dressed very casually if she appears to interview like that what does it mean it means that she is not serious about the roles and goals she is going to take the job or the responsibilities as casually as she has appeared to the interview so that is the crux not listening or paying attention to the speaker it all gives a very bad message to the interviewer or it dis disrespects the interview so when i'm talking about impression management clothing and grooming comes first body language is second and vocal communication is third here also you need to pay an attention that clothing and grooming is the first thing that appears first thing that people notice in that 3 to 4 seconds the body language the mannerisms your hygiene habits all this happens to be your body language and third thing happens to be your vocal communication when i'm talking about communication we all know how important is it to have a good communication skills it can be in your personal relationships it can be in social setup everywhere communication skills matter a lot so there is an important rule which we all need to understand which is rule 7 38 and 55 it is on effectiveness of communication given by a famous psychologist called albert meherbian and this rule is called meherbian's rule of 7 38 and 55 let us see what it actually means see in any message that you're talking or you're giving to others only 7% of the weightage is given to the spoken words and 38% of the weightage goes to the tone of your voice and 55% goes to non verbal cues i can give you an example say an employee is going to his office on the way he meets with an accident okay luckily nothing happens but what happens inside his mind 
the kind of agitation the kind of rage that he feels about the other person whomsoever the mistake might be but he is upset right with that mindset he enters the office and every day there is a person who is sitting at the gate and wishing him good morning he is a guard because the person is coming to office with a bad mindset he will not wish him back so what happens there the guard impression on this employee turns bad when he enters inside the office say there is a cubicle and a coworker is working next to him this man with lot of frustration agitation of what happened on the way he throws his bag or bangs his bag and he sits but the coworker will be expecting that this man may wish him or her good morning how is your day right and the bad mannerism that he showed again becomes a drawback to his impression so then what happens luckily or unfortunately if somebody calls like customer service people or a person who is very close to him i'm sure he's going to scream on the phone right this is not the right time to talk or he might just hang the phone so what is the impression that he is giving to the person who is speaking on the other end nowhere in the entire communication anybody knows what this person has gone through later in the tea time he might try sit and explain to people say this is what happened when i left the home i had to meet with an accident it was not my mistake so whatever story he tries to tell later it would be several hours and the impression about the person is formed very concretely so he might try and narrate them it takes only 7% but however bad he has made to feel to the guard or to the coworker will be 55% with the bad body language or mannerisms and then with whatever tone of voice he might have sounded that he is upset but the message or impression that is formed to the other person will again bring him down by his tone of voice so now you understood how important it is to have this whole sum 7% 55% and 38% when you are appearing to interview all this has to be kept in mind okay now i'm going to talk about clothing i never understood as a child why my parents got me new clothes on my birthdays or during festivals why we were made to wear new clothes now i come to an understanding that clothes affect the way you think the way you feel the way you act and the way others relate to you isn't it see appearance is something that you cannot hide in front of others however i am and i can't hide my appearance so appearance speaks your personality appearance speaks your values appearance speaks your attitudes interest and knowledge when i shared that image with you where one lady appears properly formal to the interview another lady appears very casual that means to say she is you can understand her values her attitudes her interest and knowledge about the job she has come for so it's very important for all of us to mind what we wear okay so look at the person here we all know him we have seen him several times on the media have you ever noticed him wearing a white suit no right because a person here in this photograph even without communicating anything he is communicating a lot of things through his dressing and appearance black is a color that symbolizes authority that symbolizes power black is something that makes statements and this person always will be dressed with this suit because he is dressing according to his roles goals and occasion dressing appropriately to the occasion is very important if you are going to interview if you are going to marriage if you are going to funeral if you are going to a birthday party there are different dresses that we all wear even before somebody sitting and telling you like this isn't it we have all been nurtured in that way that different occasion different mood has got a different dressing so when you are going to interview it becomes very important for you to dress in a professional attire you need to concentrate on the colors that you're going to choose why i'm telling you this is because i've seen several students attending the interview with flashy pink and glaring red color that is definitely not the colors that has to be choosed to the interviews you have something called neutral colors 
it can be black navy blue cream beige anything that is dull and mute is supposed to be a neutral color you're supposed to wear those colors for interviews okay because each color each dressing sends different mood and messages we will not dress the way we dress dress the way we dress for wedding to the interviews right how we go to wedding is a different set of mood and message that we want to give and how you go to funeral is a different mood and message that we want to give right so you have to mind what you are going to wear and here students be it men or women girl or boy whoever it is attending the interview have to keep few tips in your mind one is you need to shave your face because i've seen many students having weird beards these days okay and they carry lot of pens and huge purses in their pockets which should not be done you need to wear men same color belt and same color shoes if it is black belt you're supposed to wear black shoes if it is brown belt you're supposed to wear brown shoes you need to iron your clothes neatly whether it is summer season or whatever the season at least for interviews please go with full armed shirt okay and for ladies here i want to say that you're not supposed to overdo your makeups please trim your nails cleanly and do not use flashy colors as your nail paints do not have any heavy makeups and for both men and women do not use perfumes to a greater extent okay or it's better you don't use because you never know how sensitive is the other person for the different fragrances right you should always wear a closed shoe tuck your shirts in for the interview which will make you an outstanding candidate and special grooming for women is that you need to tie your hair properly you need to you know take care of your makeups which suits your skin do not go very glaring right and when i'm talking about four a's of image in order to influence and impress people there are these points which is appropriate authentic attractive and affordable i'll explain why i'm talking about this see dressing appropriately matters a lot that means to say you are serious about your roles and goals it is going to when you align your image that means your appearance to your goals it helps to create a strong brand resonance and who is that brand you are your own brand okay and when i say you have to dress authentically it means to say that never dress like your idols be yourself be in your comfort skin have your own individuality when expressing your true self will make you appear as a more confident person okay when i say you have to dress attractively i don't mean to say you need to look glamorous all that i mean to say is you need to be confident of who you are without having any self doubts about how you look because people treat the way they see you right and all these things has to happen in affordable way you don't have to spend lot of money to look good okay it is about it's not about what you will spend on it is about how wisely you spend and you make your choices okay no brand can make you look great unless you have that confidence inside you right so when i'm giving tips about dressing for interview you have to appear professionally appropriate to the position there is lot of background research that you have to do before entering an interview you will be knowing which company you are going to right and some companies are absolutely casual like google they don't have any kind of uniforms or they are not strict regarding the dressing sense of their employers but infosys is very strict so when you are going to interview you need to study make a background research about what are the values of the company which will help you to dress accordingly and create a good impression okay for men a dark colored suit with light colored shirt is a best option any time you have to avoid loud and flashy ties wearing white shirt and red tie gives a different mood and message definitely not for interview okay clothing should be neat it has to be clean and it has to be pressed good rule of thumb is dress like your boss because he would be setting role model for others and shoes has to be well polished i have seen most of the students outside the interview hall they'll be rubbing their shoes to the socks please take care that you need to spend that 30 seconds 1 minute in polishing your shoes at home 
match your belt accordingly shave or trim and have a neat look makeup nail polish neutral to your skin tone and ladies you have to avoid all bright unusual colors of nails because it looks unprofessional okay and if you have the habit of wearing this jewelry and accessories keep it as minimum as possible if you have the habit of wearing a lot of rings keep it only one ring per hand right and now entering this topic called body language this is all about clothing if you concentrate or if you give little importance on how you have to be clothed to interview you have crossed that first step now the second is a bigger chunk which has 55% that is body language see this non verbal communication which is used to convey the message without using words the beauty of this body language is that you cannot deliberately control it because whether you want or you don't want you will be communicating your true feelings through your eyes through your facial expressions through your postures gestures and the personal space that you leave okay there are different body language as such is a very huge subject but here i have tried to give little information regarding interview perspective like i already said you cannot deliberately control it okay there are two kinds of body language one is positive body language the second one is defensive body language what happens in case of positive body language is it promotes a feeling of trust and comfort in others say suppose you are talking to a person who is in front of you is making an eye contact with you or he is giving a genuine smile or when the topic is interested he is raising his eyebrows you feel like continuing to talk to him for a longer period but the defensive body language is it demonstrates the signs of discomfort and displeasure a person might be folding his arms and sitting he is supported or slouched or he is not looking at your face when you are talking you will obviously stop talking or you will make your communication as minimum as possible just because you feel that the other person is not interested right coming to the next important aspect which is handshake if you see here there are four different kinds of handshakes one the first one is called bone crushing you might have experienced it right when a person shakes his hand he might crush your hand so which is a wrong thing and second thing is called limp handshake or it's called dead fish handshake that means the person is trying to give you a handshake but you're just trying to touch and take your hand away very quickly that shows that you are under confident about yourself okay the third one is right handshake what does it mean is that you have to aim for a firm handshake and when you shake your hand you're supposed to give an eye contact and smile to the person whom you are shaking hand the hand should be parallel to the ground and it has to be only two pumps in two or three seconds your handshake should be ending okay the fourth one is that it is sweaty palm most of us have this sweaty palm or it might come based on the circumstances when you're tensed but what to do in such situations is that if a person is trying to offer you a handshake and your hand is wet you can just tell sorry my hand is wet okay rather than the, rather than giving him a handshake and making him feel bad or you by chance happen to receive such handshake never ever try to rub in front of the other person or wash your hand in front of the other person and hurt their feelings all that you can do is just wait for the person to disappear in front of you and then you can either wipe your hands or you can wash your hands next is posture look at the image here each person is tying his hands he is well clothed and groomed but what happens is that with each person's eye contact and facial expression there is a different mood and message that is being given out isn't it that is why i said body language can send the wrong signals and soar how you are perceived you might be feeling that you are interested in the topic but maybe because of the wrong body language that you are exhibiting the other person might perceive you as wrong so not only how you dress in interview matters how you carry yourself will also matter a lot and what are the things that you have to take care about the postures when you enter the interview is that don't slump okay you have to sit straight perpendicular and you have to show the interest you have to show your interest while the other person is talking to you if you lean forward slightly it indicates interest okay if you are reclining to the chair backward and if you are not making an eye contact you may seem you are bored and disengaged 
and never sit in the interview crossing your arms you might be feeling that you are humble and you are crossing the arms but it sends a definitely wrong message you have to avoid placing any of the items on your lap i've seen many of the students coming with a bag file or a folder they try to keep everything on their lap and when they have to give a handshake or some person crosses by they tend to make those things fall and the person will be waiting to give a handshake to you so the best thing that you can do is any of your belongings you can place it to the left side or place it down that when next person or somebody comes and wishes you tries to greet to you you can confidently get up and give a handshake or greet the person so ideally you need to convey the confidence during an interview right and there are few things which you should not at all do there is big no no for fidgeting nail biting knuckle cracking hair twirling or leg tapping all these habits are absolutely unprofessional and impolite these ab these habits if you you might think at home before leaving for the interview i should not fidget i should not crack my knuckles but what happens with the rigorous of interview going on there with the kind of questions if you are stressed your body language or your habits will tend to appear even without your own knowledge so consciously practice not to do all these things okay that is the reason why i said employers will evaluate what you do as well as what you say this is the very basic reason why employers want to see you in person okay not just hire you to the papers that you have accumulated so next is vocal communication there are three v's for us to keep in mind one is visual how you look is already communicating and vocal how you sound and verbally what you say all these matters during your communication hence for keeping this pandemic in mind most of the interviews may even happen through skype or telephonic interviews or even before all these things these interview interviews were happening so your voice has to be clear when you're talking to other person you have to moderate the volume and you have to be very careful with your intonations and pronunciations okay the other person should clearly understand what you are talking you might be a little low in communication but it is very important to convey the message that is with you to be rightly perceived as you want it to be perceived by the other person so you express a lot of emotions by modulating the tone of your voice okay so having all these things right maybe you are you are a best candidate who have your certificates well you are dressing well you are grooming well your clothing is well but still people fail in interviews do you know why that is because of the self image that the person has about himself so what is the self image now to make you understand self image is how you perceive yourself is nothing but self image see you have to internalize the message that you are intending to project when you go to an interview or when you meet a new person or anywhere you have to internalize the confidence inside you the enthusiasm inside you the positivity inside you because what is inside you is what is going to project or reflect outside by just wearing a neatly ironed clothes by just grooming yourself well you might still fail in interviews because the person who is sitting in front of you is seeing you as a wholesome person let me take this example now see passion let's talk about passion as your inner self image and profession as the image that you want to project see when passion and profession matches together it is very sure that you will enjoy the journey or you will enjoy the work if your passion is something else and if your profession is something else you will not enjoy you will struggle through it isn't it so in order to give out that first impression as your best impression you have to internalize all these things before you expect it to get projected so when i'm talking about this inner image i remember this story which i heard it during my childhood see i hope most of the people might know this story here elephant and the rope i'll narrate the story for you once an anonymous person walking by the lane sees a huge elephant tied with a small rope and it is stuck to the ground by a small wooden stick this person notices that and he stops confused by the fact that 
such a huge animal is tied only with a small rope so next day he happens to see the elephant's trainer next to it and he talks to him has this elephant never tried to break free this rope and escape try try to escape from you the trainer said certainly no because ever since the elephant was small and much younger i used to tie the elephant's leg with the same rope as elephant grew up it grew it grew with an belief that it cannot break through this rope an elephant is staying where it is just because it is conditioned to believe that it can be held back by the rope now i want all of us okay to replace the elephant and put yourself in place of it what is that rope which is making you feel you are not confident what is that one rope which is making you believe in all those limiting beliefs right all these things if you sit and think maybe for students it can be i am i am not good at communication i am not good at english i am not confident about presenting in front of others i am not uh, confident about public speaking i can't develop relationship with people that's why i remain introvert all these are kind of ropes that is actually holding you back but if you break through that conditioned belief that you have been carrying for so many years you will definitely be a charismatic personality okay let me try and make you understand how this inner image is actually formed it depends more on the background okay the strength and weakness that you learn as a child and when you grow it develops and makes you as a different adult why i am telling this is because when i was in my 5th grade i had a maths teacher she used to call students to the board to solve the problem and when i fail to solve the problem or when i go wrong while solving the problem she used to bang her head to the board and the kind of punishments that we used to get is kneel down in front of the class or stand out in front of the class just because i didn't get a solution right and over a period of year imagine as a fifth standard kid the memory that i have and the negative experience that i had with my maths teacher made me believe over a period of years that i am not good at maths i can never solve a problem i don't like maths teacher numbers are not my strengths these are the kind of labels i started developing inside me so what happened is consistently year by year my score in mathematics was always less but my score in other subjects were good because i had believed it so strongly my inner image had got dented i had a dented self image and this self image can dented self image can start as early as in 2 year old child the dented self image in my case is maths just think for a moment had the same teacher taken me to her and helped me guided me with more patience with more affection see this is where you are going wrong this is how you can work this is how you can get the solution i might have been a different person today because based on such labels i have taken many important decisions of my life maybe my career stream just because i thought i'm not good at some subject i didn't choose many fields right so dented self image can happen in any aspect of a student's life okay all if you go back to your childhood or your background and think how many of you have this dented self image regarding your body image people might be still feeling bad i am i am tall i am thin i am dark i am fat i have curly hairs i have no hairs okay color of your skin color of your hair the confidence the communication what if you cannot speak english it doesn't matter do you have that personality or charisma in order to impress people beyond just a language is what you have to think about okay and next is threshold when i'm talking about threshold what is a threshold at time when a person starts reacting or that moment when a person is actually the change is happening in him is called threshold it can be either positive threshold or negative threshold and many a times to all of us threshold comes in with life changing events maybe marriage motherhood retirement 
and now this COVID-19, right? All these things have pushed us to change. Many organizations might be thinking for years and years to make things online, but they were not able to do. But now because of this COVID, in weeks and months, they're all working online, right? So how does this actually affect a person inner image if he has a positive threshold? Take example of students. Students now might be sitting at home and still attending the online classes, but there are few students, okay, who have taken this pandemic as a positive threshold and they are trying to outgrow beyond their curriculum, attending a lot of webinars, maybe related to communication, computer skills, or public speaking, anything, okay? And those people who have taken it as a negative threshold are actually sitting at home and worrying because many organizations are downsizing now. Many businesses have gone bankrupt. We have even seen the extreme situations of negative threshold, like people are committing suicide. People are taking that harsh decisions about their life, thinking that this pandemic is such a negative threshold to them, right? If I'm talking to you in interview perspective, students might have a lot of things inside their mind. Fear of failure, lack of confidence in general, lack of presentation, lack of communication skills, do not know where to start, scared to talk in front of many people. So see, people might be giving you labels ever since you are small, that you're dark, you're thin, you're fat, okay, your hair is not good, your color is not good. So many things, X, Y, Z labels have been passed to you. But forget about X, Y, Z and concentrate only about A, B, C of your life. What is that A? It is appearance. B is behavior. C is communication. Okay. There is nothing that you cannot learn. There is nothing that you cannot upskill. There is nothing that you cannot learn and practice it. Okay. If you concentrate and Try to help yourself in your appearance, behavior, and communication. All these failures will, all these you know, fears will slowly come down and you will become a confident person. Use this pandemic time productively. Why I'm telling this is again, you're your own brand. You can achieve anything you want only when you have a positive self image because it is going to affect your life in multiple arenas like physical well-being, emotional well-being, spiritual well-being, and mental well-being, okay? See, a person who is having a negative self-image will always look down upon himself, will always try to search the flaws and imperfections in himself. He will only try to blame himself for all the things. Appreciation is zero and accusations will be more. Don't be that negative person who is having a negative self-image. If you ever notice, write it down as your label and try to look at it in a different aspect that is positive self-image. A person who is having positive self-image will always look for opportunities in any situation. Okay, He sees himself as that internalized image. If he believes that he is a positive person, no matter what is happening externally, he tries to say it through positivity. He will be very optimistic person to grab the opportunities in any way. Most of the people now are even thinking this is such a nice thing that they are getting to pause and think actually. They're trying to spend good quality time with their family members. I know at the outside it's all bad, but you can't keep crying all the time, right? So you need to have this positive self image in any of the given circumstances. I have a wonderful picture here. Observe two animals here. One is dog, the other one is cat. All of us know in comparison with dog and cat, dog is more powerful than cat. But see how dog is seeing himself in the mirror. He is seeing smaller than cat. And see how cat is seeing himself in the mirror. He is seeing like he is a tiger. But cat is seeing dog as dog. And dog is seeing cat as tiger. This happens with all of us. Because each one of us will be undervaluing ourselves for what we are in many aspects and overvaluing ourselves for what we are not. 
so we should all be like this cat who see himself big and see others as as they are okay having said this i will i would like to take you through different levels of self image how am i looking is something that is there in every person i am sure because it's the mental image of your physical appearance and how i am doing happens to be your performance image of our success and failures right and how important am i is the inner sense of adequacy value that you carry for yourself recently we saw many film actors celebrities committing suicides because they the fan following know the importance of that person but the person himself did not realize how important he is isn't it so protecting your self image becomes very crucial do not look at the mirror and give harsh comments if michelle obama is sitting and crying for the color of the skin that she has got i don't think she would have achieved all that she has achieved your color your physical appearance nothing matters in front if you keep a success as a different parameter right do we all know this person yeah it is written thomas alva edison we all know his contribution to this world i would like to take a small story from his life and narrate to you to make you understand the importance of self image edison was a very small kid which you all know that he is not a person who got a formal education he is a student who got expelled from his school once edison's master called him and wrote a letter and he gave it to edison and told your mother should read this okay little edison took the letter to the home he gave it to his mother and then he started pestering him to tell what is written in the letter so what happened here is the mother reads the letter and she tells edison that your son is a genius the school is too small for him and does not have good enough teachers to train him please teach him yourself this is what your master has written congratulations edison you are so brilliant tomorrow onwards the school is this home is your school this is what a mother tells the kid over a period of years edison becomes popular for his inventions his mother has passed away and one day he finds the same piece of paper in the mother's belongings so he tries to pick that paper and reads it by himself and he was shocked to read the message because it was written that your son is mentally deficient we cannot let him attend our school any more he is expelled this was the actual message written by the master to edison's mother so what happened here edison moved to silence he was shaken by the fact or by the lie that mother had told and he writes in his biography that thomas alva edison was a mentally deficient child whose mother turned him into the genius of the century hats off to that mother right who knew the importance of self image to her own kid had his mother told the truth maybe edison wouldn't have been worked for his fullest capacity keeping that dented self image within himself right so why i am talking about the self image so much is that it is like this butterfly effect what happens here do you know what is butterfly effect it is said that the flutter of butterfly wings at one end can bring the typhoon on the other end of the earth that means look at the water and one small touch of the butterfly it is creating that waves isn't it one small positive change can bring in huge amount of positive changes in each and everyone's life because we are all gifted with our natural talents and strengths to achieve our greatest potential i wanted to conduct this experiment since video is not visible i'm just explaining you please imagine this all of us if you keep a candle in front of you if you light it you have to sit and observe that flame <clears throat> for 30 to 40 seconds what happens is that you can always see the flame will be shining perpendicular right any amount of turbulence is created from any of the 
sides or any of the corners the flame may waver but again it comes back to the right conscious and it starts to shine we all are meant to shine isn't it as students you're all meant to shine so what happens is you have to be this flame no matter how much the external turbulence will come you need to come back to your right conscious and think and work for your success so try conducting this experiment at home take a plate put little amount of water and light a candle after observing the candle for 30 40 seconds take an empty glass and cover it to the candle what happens is that within 5 to 10 seconds the flame goes off and all the water will be sucked inside the glass why does this happen why does the flame goes off i want to relate it to our self image topic because when you internalize too much of negativity you will not be able to shine but rather you should be like a lamp where a little opening is there and there is lot of protection for you to cover the external negativity and your own inner strength will your own inner positive self image will help you shine brighter and brighter okay why i'm talking about this is because self image and self esteem are always interlinked a person with negative self image will have a lower self esteem a person with positive self image will have higher self esteem and a person who is having negative self image will have this called will have this concept called self criticism what does he actually do self criticism to an extent is good because you correct your own mistake you are your own in critic and you try to develop yourself but what happens if that criticism goes beyond control a person will start complaining about the physical appearance about behavior about inner thoughts personality his intellectual attributes no matter what his achievements are he is never satisfied or he is never happy with it okay so how do you enhance this positive self image you need to perceive it first in order to believe that it is real look at the cat here what matters most is how you see yourself isn't it so perception is reality if you start perceiving you will believe it is real you have to change the stories that you're going to tell yourself you might have lot of labels written for you see one of my friend she was a very bright student she finished her engineering she went abroad she joined she finished her post graduation in one of the finest universities and then she she worked there for several years she got awards and she had written back and year back when i met her i was so frozen to understand what she was going through the moment i said her you are doing a great job she started weeping she said no matter what i do no matter how much i achieve no matter where i go i am being treated or i am being labeled for the color of my skin for the size that i am people literally called her black fat and we never understood why she never attended any of the alumni meets or she never appears to any of the gatherings so start changing the stories that you're going to tell yourself you don't have to label yourself what others label you as you need to rewrite your labels and change the stories that you're going to tell yourself and you have to believe in it strongly so that the change will occur see like any other skill this also can be learned and practiced all that you need is little time and patience okay why i took the first impression topic to interview and then i stopped that i'm stopping at self image is that for anything to occur to you originally it needs a lot of practice it needs a lot of work that happens inside out because i strongly believe that what is inside you is going to reflect outside i can tell you within a week time i can tell you how to dress how to a uh, mind with your body language and all those things but what is that spirit which keeps you going is your message that you have internalized so you have to change you have to grow wholesomely beyond your certifications as a person okay so the take away from my session is that the positive inner self image will 
help you achieve high self esteem and people with high self esteem will have higher self confidence and having all these three in place you will give out the best first impression okay to do this you need to practice there are three steps sim very simple steps but it takes time okay second is you have to do more practice in order to you know in order to internalize whatever you have learned the third thing is you have to do lot lot more practice because you have to internalize it and reflect it out all right so having said this i would like to quote that you never get a second chance to make a first impression this was a message that i wanted to convey you through this webinar thank you so much and kindly follow my page on instagram and facebook for interview tips on and on many other topics thank you ma'am thank you sir i'm open thank for questions yeah so ma'am a uh, very simple and lucid presentation uh, okay. thank you ma'am you have rightly said that good marks is not only the one source and you have also added that impress and influence is essential madam Absolutely. you have rightly been authenticated more about visual impression matters body language matters and we are very clear about your impression management clothing and grooming body language very good explanation ma'am on dented self and also the thresholds positive and negative uh, so ma'am you have rightly pointed out that appearance behavior and communication practice it and excellent rule 7 38 55 for effectiveness of communication so ma'am you have given a good explanation on clothing which affects the way you think the way you feel the way you act and the way you relate to you and also a given clear explanation about dressing around the role goals so influence about the colors to choose neutral colors background information about the organization and the good rule is to dress as your boss it was very clear ma'am about the body positive body language as well as defensive body language we were very clear about the handshakes also and the voice modulation moderate volume careful to be with its connotations and the pronunciation very interested ma'am yes ma'am we are meant to shine thank you so much ma'am and before going into the out of thanks let us have some questions that are here we are having some uh, questions here ma'am sure ma'am yeah and uh, the first question is is there any dress code for the interview actually have explained it but still a, a student have asked about the dress code for the interview okay let me tell you ma'am uh, students this is something that you need to make your background research why i am telling you this is because each and every industry okay one of my friend who recently attended the interview in mintra she went with three piece suit but it was not appreciated there but if you actually see that is how you attend the interview with a proper formal wear but that is a fashion industry which was not appreciated so i am telling you right each and every industry each and every new job you attend make a lot of background research when you understand the company's cultures and values you will be able to have a clue on what kind of dressing will help you and the best tip is i've already told in my ppt that you need to be formal you need to be groomed well without any extra makeups or nail colors be it girls or for boys no perfumes which is actually making the other person feel uncomfortable you need to take care of the entire you know appearance grooming and the hygiene habits you might be dressed well but you have not trimmed your nails and if the nail has got a lot of dirt you you are gone you are you know your impression is gone there so you need to take care of all those things dress formally okay being a uh, formal dressing is always the best yeah thank you so much ma and the next question is is it necessary to wear a overcoat or else we can wear a full arm shirt with a tie okay see why i'm telling you this is there are different positions that you apply in the organizations right having a blazer or a coat symbolizes authority and it sends a message that you are a little bit more serious about the role and goals that you're going to take up okay it's not mandatory going with a neat uh, iron uh, trousers and a full arm shirt with a tie will also do if possible look at the position that you are applying 
if possible you can wear overcoat which which will always add to your presentation yeah thank you ma'am yes according to the position uh, we are going to attend we can wear a overcoat or a formal shirt absolutely uh, what is yeah ma'am what is the difference between seriousness and anxiety seriousness and anxiety and, ah yeah anxiety see seriousness is being act to the goal if a person has called you for an interview you need to think seriously for example i have seen many of the students coming with the same kind of resume okay they might be using that resume for over 4 to 5 years can that really work for you it can't work seriousness is you change your resume often when you apply for jobs right anxiety is getting really anxious which might will which will actually give a negative or which will actually draw you back don't have anxiousness or don't have this anxiety but have seriousness when you have seriousness you will mind your thinking you will mind your grooming you will mind what you wear anxiety makes you get tensed makes you stressed out okay yeah, yeah. good explanation ma'am uh, really we have to update uh, uh, see as and when possible absolutely Uh, Ma'am, uh, Rule Seven Thirty Eight and Fifty Five in your effective communication. What What does it mean by non-verbal cues? cues. I think so. Non-verbal. Yeah. Cues. See, what is non-verbal cues is that everything without verbal, the way you appear, the way you sit, the way you shake hand, everything comes. See, your body language, clothing, and grooming comes in non-verbal cues. To say yeah. simple. in simple language all these three visual impression aspects will come in your non verbal cues verbal is what you talk non verbal is without talking what you actually try to communicate happens to be your non verbal cues yeah yeah good explanation ma'am uh, i think uh, these are the four possible uh, questions and uh, informative questions they have asked ramraj sir is there any other questions should i ask लास्ट And the least one, I am not okay. You are also not okay. <laughs> yeah. Is there any technique? Is there any technique to know yeah. what type of personality we are? We belongs to. Is there any That's technique to know? Technique as such is when we make the SWOT analysis, sir. For any of the confusions regarding our personality, I strongly prefer going through the SWOT analysis. When we SWOT. write the yeah SWOT strength, weakness, opportunity, and threats. Mm-hmm. When we write that, see, I am okay, you are okay is always a win-win situation. So it all it mostly works out in negotiation skills, right, sir? So the person who is negotiating with us also has to win, and we are also supposed to be in the winning edge. I am not okay, you are not okay. A person like a person who is actually not. okay with anything like i said it is a negative person who is having a negative self image it goes along with those when we try and make this swot analysis we can understand where we have strengths and where we can create opportunities in case with all the not okays we can relate our threats and weaknesses when we make this swot analysis we have to make sure that our strengths will work for our opportunities and strengths will help us to overcome the weakness and strengths will help you to be aware of the threats so with thank this you. technique we can surely come to an understanding uh, thank you ma'am thank you thank you, thank you. Nice. Thank you. any other question rather so thank you ma'am i have a question yes uh, ma'am you were given you have given about the dented self yeah ma'am dented self image uh, yeah it's dented self image how to yeah. overcome this negative aspect we were might have come across uh, come across a number of negative aspects in my life absolutely no? yeah yeah this is so very difficult want... to overcome no ma'am it's actually like this see uh, i said the person with positive self image and a negative self image 
if a person has got a dented self image he thinks a lot about the society and i see when i talk to students i understand most of the times the fear is not about their own personality it's about what other people will think what the society will think what my fellow classmate will think when we just put i said forget about the x y z of labelings whatever dented self image ma'am be it our body image be it skin hair communication confidence or anything or people might have gone through different levels of you know abusing or you know childhood bad childhoods all those things all these i frame it to x y z and all that you need to concentrate is a b c when we do that parents behavior and communication yeah. each day one will actually help you grow a lot dented self image is something that has to be addressed ma'am i recently came to know that not only students and working people even homemakers have got a lot of dented self image they feel sure. very low about themselves but Definitely. they are the super women right mm-hmm. but yeah, when it is when somebody tells them what they are doing is a great job it is actually a good thing they can overcome like i also demonstrated a small candle experiment like i i just had this uh, kept ready with me if i light a candle ma'am which i'm not going to do now but if i light a mm-hmm. candle if we observe it the flame always goes up and shines in a straight direction what happens if i create any kind of turbulence with some kind of wind flame may waver but it will again come back to the center and it starts shining we are mm-hmm. all like that we are meant to shine but what happens is this glass in the beginning of the session i said this is our mind it symbolizes our mind and the water i had put it in the plate that means our learnings past experiences our negative experience all these are there in that water which is actually our thoughts if i try to cover this mind with the negativity the water will get sucked in this is a simple experiment we all know isn't it ma'am so what yeah. happens is when the water gets sucks sucked in the flame will go off yeah. i wanted to demonstrate it because most of the students or ourselves are always like this one negativity comes we try to dwell upon it so much that we absorb it we internalize mm-hmm. the negativity so if there is if it was a lamp there would have been an opening on the top so where we only see positive and we try to shine back so that is how i wanted all of us to be where we can overcome just imagining this candle we can you know actually uh take away all the dented self image yeah definitely we are meant only to oh shine as you have told you <laughs> nice, yeah nice, nice. thank you is sir. there any other questions sir uh ramra sir prem sir any more questions sir by our students no ma'am no no questions ma'am no more questions um sir sami sir shall we finish the session yes ma'am we can wind up the session ma'am ah uh, yeah okay I would like to uh, thank yeah. Mr. Sami sir, you are such Ramrat sir, Prem sir, everybody who had given me this opportunity to share my learning. I hope I have helped student with little knowledge, whatever I have got. Thank yeah, you so much. Yeah, definitely, ma'am. It was a very, very lucid and simple presentation. We you, do ma'am. adhere to your practice of the interview, ma'am. I think thank the students would be benefited from your session. Thank you so much, ma'am. thank you uh, and uh, thank now i thank you bindu ma'am really thank you so much sir system was uh, wonderful i actually watched your uh, session this really helpful to our students thank you much for accepting thank you so much sir thank you so much uh, wonderful time thank, thank you uh, you can proceed as ma'am thank you principal sir request the additional d student service uh, a simple person kind enough sincere and hard working and the co convener of the program to propose a vote of thanks welcome alhum sir to propose a vote of thanks good afternoon the first impression is the best impression you will never get a second chance to make a first impression with this golden word i am going to propose a vote of thanks it's my pleasure to thank our college managing board to grant a permission to organize the webinar for the welfare of the students community i feel delighted to thank our honorable principal nath and dr p sundarabandian for motivating us to move in the path of success and achievement thank you sir it's my privilege to thank our chief guest mrs tate jindu mba hacha the image consultant and top trainer the certified mindfulness coach bangalore Ma'am, your speech is more encouraging. We are admire on your speech. 
and presentation your enthusiastic speech on the topic the interview first impression matter the employee hire people or not paper is more useful to our students ma'am and nearly 200 students are benefited from your speech thank you ma'am and you to create courage to take the interview to face the interview to our students thank you ma'am i find no words to express my thanks to chapter e swami msc mp phd the dean student service sir your effort make this program a successful one thank you sir i express my heartfelt thanks to organizing secretary dr s mukulashmi assistant professor of thomas the crore or prem sangar assistant professor of computer application mr g ramraj assistant professor of thomas s sca and lakshmana prabhu and k7 the technical assistant they are give a lot of support to us the pillar of the program and thank you very much guys i feel glad to thank the participants who spend your precious time to attend this webinar thank you one and all thank you very much thank you ma'am thank you sir thank you so much thank you sir thank you alagmani sir for proposing the vote of thanks and really we appreciate bindu ma'am for your wonderful session we look forward in the future also uh, thank, thank you so much ma'am uh, thank you and so uh, i thank you thank you ma'am i thank thank the convener of the program dr p sami for giving me an opportunity to hold the session thank you so much sir sami sir sami sir your voice is muted muted yeah yes ma'am yes ma'am close padilla ma'am thank you thank you very much thank you very much thank you so much sir thank you thank you uh, can i stop the sharing yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah sure thank you thank you